Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming to my session today. And I'm going to speak about Cosmos DB with you today. Uh, I'm going to give you some tips, and hopefully we will have some time for demo at the end. Uh, so let me speak about myself before we jump into the presentation. My name is Hassan Savran, and I am a data platform MVP uh, from Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, I am my own company. I'm mostly focusing on the Cosmos DB consulting. But in the meantime, I have a full-time job. Uh, I'm working in, in an insurance company in the United States uh, as a business intelligence manager. Uh, I have good experience with the web development, 15-plus uh, years. And also with the business intelligence manager, I have been uh, in an insurance company. I have to deal with all kind of data, databases. So I have some good knowledge. Uh, if I cannot answer any of your questions today because of timing. Please uh, reach me from LinkedIn or the Twitter. I will be more than happy to answer any of your questions from there. Uh, also, check out my blog. I try to write as much as I can, but mostly I share SQL Server, Cosmos DB, C Sharp front end, you know, whatever I know, I try to put it out there. So you might find something interesting out there. Check it out, please. Uh, all right, let's actually jump in and try to explain how you can actually save money with Cosmos DB because that's the first thing uh, many people kind of hear is Cosmos DB is an expensive database. It doesn't have to be. So to understand that, let's actually try to compare the centralized database, a relational database, to a distributed database like Cosmos DB. So First, centralized database. Uh, we have the centralized database here as a sun, right? So you have clients. Clients can be a report, it can be a web application, and it's try to pull some data. The last thing client needs to worry about where the database is, because you have the connection string, and whenever the client actually sends the query, it knows exactly where database is. It doesn't need to worry about how it's going to actually pull the data, because that's going to be database's job to actually pull the data. So in this, insur in this uh, uh, the conference, you know, most of the, actually, the sessions about the database, how you can actually get the data faster by, you know, creating indexes, partitioning. So people are trying to, you know, figure out how this database is going to get the data as fast as it can. The client really doesn't have any kind of worries in this case. Uh, there are problems here, though. So as you can see, we have only one database. So usually, that is the bottleneck when there's a problem. Uh, it's not easy to scale because, well, the only way to scale it, well, you have to put, add more CPU power on it or you have to add more memory on it, but there's going to be a limit for that. So, and also when your tables are getting larger, it's going to get, you know, challenging to actually change the schema, especially if you have the replication. It's going to be really pain to actually make those changes. On top of that, licensing. As your application grows, your licensing cost actually will probably cost you more. Uh, if you compare this to distributed databases, distributed databases are a little bit different. Uh, they can actually scale much faster because, as you can see, we don't have a one resource anymore. We have many resources. And the problem with the client is, OK, let's say I'm going to go and get the sales. Let's say we have the sales uh, in here. And you are going to say, OK, I'm going to get the sales in London. Where do you think the London sales is? So client is not even like a one resource anymore. So you, your client actually has to know where the data is so it can actually go and make that uh, query only in that database rather than sending to every, all of the databases. That's where the most of the problem actually starts with the Cosmos DB because, well, if you don't know where the data is, you need to send that query to every database server then that means it's going to use the CPU, it's going to use the CPU and the memory in each database servers, and that's going to cost you more uh, money to actually pull the data. Uh, the good part about the scaling here is uh, each of the database servers has a queue. Uh, they have a horsepower and they have a storage size. If you hit those limits, Cosmos DB is just going to give you another database server. So you don't need to worry about this limit or the licensing that, you know, a relational database actually has in here. So if we go a little bit more deeper on that, on those database servers of distributed uh, databases, that's actually what a database, Cosmos DB database, looks like. You have the physical partition, and that's where Cosmos DB lives. That's where actually all the database engine, all the indexes, and everything is in. So if you actually go a little bit deeper, you will see that there's a replica set under each physical partition. 
Now you have a leader and you have a three followers. So that picture here actually kind of tells you why Cosmos DB is very fast. Because if you are the client, you are a web application, you try to pull data. You don't have one place to hit, but you have potentially four places to actually get this data from, depending on the consensus level you actually selected. Uh, each physical partition, there are like two numbers that you need to know if you're a DBA or a developer, doesn't matter. You need to know those two numbers by heart. The first one is the 50 gig storage limit, and the next one is the 10,000 request unit. That is the horsepower actually it gives you. If you are gonna need any of those more than that, Cosmos DB actually is gonna give you another physical partition. So if you have a 60 gig storage and 5,000 request units, you know that you are gonna actually have at least two physical partitions in that unit. So, but those are the actual the limits of the physical partitions. Cosmos DB does not wait until you actually hit those two numbers. Uh, to actually go a little bit deeper on that, if you have a manual threshold, as soon as you hit the 6,000 request units, Cosmos DB will actually trigger a new physical partition for you. So you'll have two. If you have the RS scale, Cosmos DB will give you, for each 10,000 request units, a new physical partition. So whenever you try to, I guess, you know, you might try to increase your request unit because you just sent an index and you want it to go faster, you want to be sure that you are not passing those numbers because you try to maybe make your database level a little bit faster, but you might actually trigger a whole new physical partition because of that. Uh, the trick is, let's say, you ended up with the two physical partition, and you figure out that, you know what, I'm gonna actually scale down. Physical partitions are not gonna scale down. They're not gonna go back to merge. So you're gonna be actually stuck with the number of the physical partitions. You cannot actually put them back together. Now, uh, let's try to actually give you an example. Let's say we have a container, and our container has 9,000 request units. Also, the size is 79 gig. So by just looking at those two numbers, you know that you are dealing with two physical partitions because, well, first of all, the 9,000 request, 9, request units is more than 6,000. So that gives you two physical partitions out there. Also, container size is 79 gig. That means you have two physical partitions. So really, that your physical partition should look like this. So request units is gonna be, you have total 9,000. Well, you, the second one is gonna need some resources, so we are gonna actually divide your 9,000 request units to 4,500. 4, so let's say the storage is not gonna be always balanced because that's gonna be depending on the partition key. You really need to pick a perfect partition key to actually make the storage perfectly, in this case, almost 40 to 40. That's really not gonna happen. So let's say uh, the, the second one actually has more data than the first one. So as you can see, this one is uh, full almost 88%. So let's say you are gonna have more data coming up and let's say, for whatever re reason, you kind of need to add a bulk data, or you just maybe wait one or two years, you end up with new uh, 12 gig data, let's say perfectly, we are actually putting six here and six here. So you know that this one actually here, the 44 gig, is gonna hit to 50, and as soon as actually it's gonna hit to 50, you know that we are gonna have a new physical partition here. So that's the new actually is gonna look like this. First, you need to know is, as you can see, your request unit actually went down. It used to be 4,500. Now you have 3,000 because we have to share the third one. Third one needs to need some resources here. So now the second one and third one looks great because everything is like 50-50 here, right? But the first one here looks like we are gonna have some issues here. We have a lot of data in this, and also we have less request unit than before. Uh, so that's gonna, you know, potentially give you 429 problems, which is like you don't have enough request unit to actually run your queries if they are in the number one here. There's only one way to fix this problem, uh, which is gonna be, you know, you are gonna increase your request units. So it was working fine with the 4500, probably you're gonna try, you know what, I need to make this 4500 again because it was not giving me any problem before. If you wanna do that, well, to do that, you need to add 1,500 to each of them. That means you need another 4,500 request units, and your is already 9,000, so you are almost like adding half of what you are paying here. So you can fix it that way, 
or you can use the two numbers that actually I gave you to actually trick the physical partition. What you can do here is, for short term, rather than you know, adding 4,500, 4, 4, you can actually make this 20,000 request units. What that's going to actually do is it's going to trigger a whole new physical partition here because you are actually passing 18,000. 6,000 for each of them, and that's going to trigger a whole new physical partition. As soon as you do that, we are going to actually break the first one. The bre we are breaking the first one because that's the largest one. Cosmos TV will always break the largest physical partition uh, and try to balance that. So in this case, uh, we are getting this and creating a whole new physical partition here. As you can see now, the, it's balanced fine. It's 41%, 50%, so the data is really fine. But we don't want to pay for 20,000, right? That's going to be a lot of uh, money, especially if you are jumping from 9,000. So in this case, now we know everything is balanced fine. This is the time that you can actually go back to 9,000. Now, when you went to 9,000, our physical partition is just going to stay as it is. The only thing is going to change is the request units. So it used to be 3,000. Now you have 2,250, but you have less data. So you should not have 429 problems here that much because that actually helps your situation without paying more money, Cosmos DB, to actually fix this problem. And if you are going to need a little bit more, then you are, gonna, you are not going to need a 4,500 uh, additional request unit to fix this problem. So yes, you don't have any kind of power to change anything in the physical partition level, but by just knowing those two numbers, you can actually add new physical partitions to kind of help you in the situations like that. So that was the physical partition. Now let's actually go a little bit uh, higher than that and let's start to talk about the logical partitions. Logical partitions are the place that actually you define the partition key. So whenever you try to create a container, this is the place that actually you are uh, picking a partition key. So you want to be sure that you are the value that or the property you are going to pick is going to be a high cardinality. So for example, if you are looking at the sales, you don't want to kind of put all the sales by country, right? Because you don't want uh, everything to, for in London, for example, or the England, you're going to have more sales than in a smaller country. So you don't want to kind of, you, you want to balance everything. Uh, the second thing you need to know about, partition key value cannot be updated. So whatever you pick, as a partition key, you want to be sure that you are not going to actually update that value later. Uh, there's a limit, 20 gig limit for each partition, the logical partition key. You need to kind of uh, think about that too, because if you are, for example, uh, storing the, all the sales, let's say for you know, London, that's my, our partition key, you want to be sure that you are not going to have more than 20 gig data for that uh, partition. Also, uh, you might say that, you know what, my database is not going to get that big. I don't need to worry about the 50 gig uh, limit or 10,000 request units. That might be the case for you, but I will suggest you to actually think about the feature and be sure that you know at least add a little bit more partition keys on it and test your queries. Let's see how they are going to actually cost you. If it happens, at least you will prepare for it. Uh, and also, don't, if you are having issues, uh, you know, you might have a container and you might, it might be good with writing data, but when you are trying to read data because you don't have the partition key, the, you, it might actually cost you a lot of request units. In that case, rather than try to reorganize and repartition the whole uh, container, don't be afraid to actually create a whole new container with a different partition key with the, exactly with the same data and use a change feed to actually sync those. So whenever you are writing, you can write to a container which is write on, you know, write heavy friendly. When you are reading, you can read from the other container. That will be actually more uh, cheaper to fix the problem rather than you try to repartition and try to, uh, I guess, fix the problem if you have issues. So if I try to, I guess, explain that a little bit more, here is actually what storage costs you in Azure. So Let's say we have a 10 gig database, and really that's going to cost you $2, uh, two and a half dollar per month. So if you think about it, you know it's much easier to fix this problem with the storage rather than you try to kind of reorganize your container and try to fix it in other ways. So if you can 
In relational databases, yeah, that's a no-no because you try to kind of put the same data in another place. But in NoSQL, that's not the issue. So if you can fix with the storage, you can actually uh, do that. It will be more, uh, much cheaper. Now, uh, if we kind of compare this uh, right now, so if you organize the data well, and if you pick the right partition key, you are going to be like in left side, right? You, when you ask something to Cosmos TV, Cosmos TV is going to actually go and know exactly where your data is. It's going to know exactly which database engine has the data, and it's going to actually go and try to find it. The right side, though, if you pick a random partition key, and if you are going to say, Cosmos TV, you know what? I am looking the sales in London here. Well, guess what? It needs to go in each partition and try to find that data for you. That is going to cost you more CPU, that is going to cost you more memory, and that's going to cost you more. And that's why, I guess you here, if you pick a wrong partition key, you are going to be in this situation, you are going to make Cosmos DB Engine work harder, and at the end, it's going to cost you uh, much more. So whenever you are picking the partition key, please spend your time and test it, and be sure that it's work uh, with your data, rather than just picking one and try to fix it later, because it will, the, the problem is going to get larger and larger because you're going to have more data. That means you're going to have more uh, partitions here. So if the partition, you know, the request, you know, if it, it costs you like 10 request units today, and if you're going to add more partition later, it's going to get 15 request units later. It's going to get 20 request units later uh, until you fix the problem. So it's much easier to kind of, I guess, focus on the beginning rather than later. Uh, so let's give you an example for that. Cross partitions. Uh, so let's say we have a container name, posts, and our partition key is post ID. And let's say we have only four uh, physical partitions to start with. So now, as you might guess, r this is really a write uh, heavy application because your post ID is pretty unique. For each time you write, the post ID is going to be different. That is great because your writes are going to be very, very fast. Well. That's the problem, though. So whenever you need to kind of actually see, let me see like what people post today, right? If you have a query like that and you try to give a grid to your users, well, the post ID is not going to be in it. So you're going to look by date. For example, we are looking for maybe, let's say, the post dates from a specific date. This is going to actually hit you in each physical partition because your where class does not have the post ID in it. In that case, let's say if uh, this costs you three request units per physical partition, you have four of them, so actually it's going to be 12 request units for you. And if this is going to be a, you know, much more complicated, this can actually, I see places, it can hit the 500 and 600 request units, uh, and it can be a really problem. So, that's where the cross-partition, uh, I guess, problem comes up. So to fix that problem, uh, actually, Cosmos DB team has been working on a new way to reorganize the uh, partition key. Picking one partition key, it doesn't matter what database, is not really easy. Uh, so Cosmos DB is actually giving you hierarchical partition key, and this is mostly for like more like multi-tenant database solutions. And it still has a 20 gig limit, for, but it's going to be for the whole hierarchy, not just like one property. And this is going to be kind of try to balance write-heavy and the read-heavy problem that I, was, I have been talking about, and also synthetic keys. Those are mostly for the IoT devices. And in IoT devices, you don't really have uh, that. Usually, you don't have that many properties to kind of use it. Uh, so hierarchy key uh, can be uh, used for this. As you can see, the hierarchy key used to be a string, and now actually it's a list of strings, and it can have up to three properties. So in here, uh, let's say I'm selling data, uh, or I, I'm se I have se selling data, and I just use the client ID as a partition key, right? So the problem with that is it might be, if the client ID is uh, busy, it might hit the 20 gig limit. Uh, or, you know, I might have one client in one city doing a lot of business, the other one doesn't. So you can kind of control that with this hierarchy ID here. And this is still in private preview, so they are still working on it. Uh, hopefully it's going to be public preview soon, and I'm sure we will hear more about that coming up. But I just want to kind of uh, cover that here too. 
Now, uh, let's see, the next one is pagination. This is kind of tricky. So it's a little bit different with the relational databases. So let's say in the right side, we have our web application. It requests some data from the Cosmos DB. So whenever it actually asks for the data, Cosmos DB responds to data. So there are two numbers here that you need to know. The first one, Cosmos DB must response, give you a response in five seconds. That doesn't mean it's going to respond to all of the data, but it's going to give you something in five seconds. The second one is the page uh, that cannot be more than four megabytes. So whatever you're asking, Cosmos DB's limit is going to be four megabytes. So you cannot really control anything with the five seconds here, but you have some kind of control with the uh, box here, which is the max item. By default, it is 100. So let's say you say select top 150 from sales, right? That means uh, your request is going to come here, and it's going to get actually first top 100, and Cosmos DB is going to return back to you. It's going to return back to a token with that. And it says that, you know what, I have more data for you. If you want, use this token and make another request to get your data. So you're going to use that token and go back and get the other 50. So that means you're running query twice in Cosmos DB, which is going to cost you more money. So you can actually control that with the max item count. So it's, if you are you know, always querying by you know, top 150, you can easily make this 200. So you can actually visit the uh, Cosmos DB once rather than twice. So it will charge you for uh, once. Uh, that kind of like the, I guess, the uh, workflow I just talked about, SDK actually handles for you. So you don't really see that is happening, but whenever you actually query from Cosmos DB, that's what the SDK handles for you. So you don't even see that. But if you are using the REST API, you have to handle that manually yourself. All right, let's uh, talk about indexes. Now, as you might guess, now we first talk about the physical partition. First, you kind of need to know which physical partition you need to hit before you even worry about indexes. Because if you are going to hit all of the cross, you know, all of the physical partitions, yeah, indexes will help you, but you are going to actually still pay uh, more money because you don't know the phys which physical partition you should hit. Now, uh, there are three modes when it comes to the indexing. So just like many databases, we have a data file, and there's only one index file in Cosmos DB. And really, the indexing mode here is really the consistency between these two uh, files. The default one is consistent, uh, which means that whenever there's a change in data file, uh, immediately you will have that in index file. So everything will be uh, sync uh, as soon as the data changes. This one is the most expensive one. Next one is the lazy. And lazy, you won't really see it that much. And the main reason is it's dangerous. Because what you are saying is by uh, picking lazy here, you are saying your data file eventually uh, sync to index file. That means that your data file might have more data than index file. And if your query is actually using the index file to pick the data, you might not actually see all the data that actual data file has. So if you are using lazy, please just change it to consistent. Lazy is cheaper than consistent, but anything else, like anything else in the life, you know, you pay for what you get. So just, you know, if you are using the lazy, please just change the consistent. Many people use the lazy because, you know, that might be the first time you are actually pushing data to Cosmos TV and nobody's really using the application. So if that is the case, just, you know, pick none rather than lazy, because if that is the case, you know, you are pushing all the data, let's say one terabyte data you are just pushing, you are still, by picking lazy, you are still actually syncing the index file. So you don't have to do that if you are uh, pushing data bulk, la bulk load. So none is whenever you are trying to uh, bulk load data, none is great for that, so you don't have to worry about the index file. That makes your writes much faster because you don't have to write anything in the index file. Uh, also, if you are using the Cosmos DB as a key value uh, engine, you really don't need the indexes, because your key, which is your partition key, is already indexed, and you, Cosmos DB knows it. And value, usually you don't query by the value. So if you are using just like a key value, I guess, engine, you can just pick none, and you will save some money with the Cosmos DB. 
If you go a little bit more, I guess, deeper than that, so we have three index types uh, when you are dealing with indexes. In the right side, you see your, uh, usually that's what you see when you open it by default, uh, your index policy looks like. There are three types of indexes in Cosmos DB. Uh, the first one is range index, which is, covers most of the, you know, equals to, larger to, you know, uh, all of those common stuff is at the range indexes. The second one is the spatial indexes, and those are mostly for the geospatial data. What it really does is, uh, I mean, basically, if you are, you know, saving, for example, the countries on the Cosmos DB, it puts countries close to each other on the disk, so it can kind of find what's around that easily. Uh, composite index is the last one and the latest one, and if you have, like, really complex uh, queries, if you are ordering by maybe with many uh, properties, composite index actually can help you. We can look at that uh, in a little bit here. So let's actually start with uh, excluding the properties. So when you say excluding the properties, uh, what you are really saying here is uh, you want to say, you want to tell to Cosmos TV what should not be indexed. Uh, that helps you because the storage is going to be smaller if you are going to exclude the pets. For example, I'm going to show you the Stack Overflow database here, which has, for example, comments or the question, right? So you may never try to, I guess, uh, query by the question. It's going to a chunk of text, and that's going to take a lot of storage. So if that is the case, you might want to exclude that. So you will save uh, money, and in the same time, since you don't have to write this chunk of text to the storage, uh, it will, your writes will be much faster. So. That's right heavy application friendly if you're going to exclude. And it helps your index file size. And really, it's like where you don't want to spend your money by uh, picking the excluded index, excluding pets. Next one is including indexes. So this is, I guess, more like a SQL Server kind of way. You are telling Cosmos TV what should be indexed rather than what shouldn't be indexed. So if you're going to go this way, you can do it. but. I will not recommend it because we don't have a schema, right? In SQL Server, you have a schema. You know what columns are there. In, we are dealing with the JSON file here. So anytime, somebody can introduce a new property. If that is the case, and if you don't have this path here, which actually says that Cosmos TV is going to index every property, if you don't have this one, then that's going to be your responsibility, just like in SQL Server. If you have a new, uh, you know, column comes up and if you want to index with that, you have to come here and change this policy. And if you do that, then you are going to actually cause a re-indexing. Re-indexing is a little bit easier in uh, relational databases because, as I say, because there's only one database engine, you might be dealing 10, 20 database engines here. So it's going to take much longer to actually re-index for you. If you are going to actually keep that as it is here, and kind of tell Cosmos TV what should be excluded rather than included. Whenever you actually add a new property or JSON document, uh, everything is going to get indexed automatically. You don't have to change anything. Uh, next one is composite indexes. So in composite indexes, they are great for the complex filters, expressions, any kind of aggregations, order by. Uh, you can actually put them together in one indexing policy. And if you have a lot of data, that will actually save you a lot of request units. Uh, order is important, which means uh, if you are using by ascending or descending in the order by, whenever you, I guess, define your composite index, your indexing policy, you want to be sure that they're actually matching uh, your queries. If they don't match, then you might not be actually using the composite index that you actually create. Uh, by default, you can add up to eight properties. If you want to add more, you can contact the Cosmos DB, and you can actually, they can add for you. But I've never seen that people need more than eight properties. Uh, if you have any geospatial data, you cannot create composite index on them. And if you have high cardinality on your data, I will really suggest that composite index to you and just spend some time on it and try to figure out. It can really help you uh, save money on Cosmos DB. Now, uh, index transformation. Uh, 
The most important about index transformation, don't think that in like in a uh, relational database, you want to make all those changes in the same time. You don't want to kind of add an index, then go back and add another one and add another one. As I say before, you are dealing with many database servers and it takes time to actually finish that indexing job. Uh, so I will suggest you to kind of make all your index changes in the same time in the indexing policy file. So whenever you actually trigger that, the production will not get affected and everything will work until your new indexing uh, file is ready. So basically it's free, but what's actually happening here is, you know, let's say you have 400 request units per second, right? And you fire at the index transformation. Your application might be constantly using 350 request units per second, so you have like this 50 left. So actually index transformation uses that 50 to complete the index transformation. Easily you can actually change the request units and maybe make it 1,000 until index transformation is done and you can kind of return back if you want to make it faster, that's an option. You just want to be sure that you are not hitting those physical partition numbers that I, I you know, talk about like 6,000, 10,000 or the uh, 50 gig. As, as long as you don't hit those and you don't create another physical partition, index transformation, you know, it might help to actually add more request units until it's done. Also, whenever you are query, we have actually a whole different way to get the data in Cosmos DB, especially from the SDK, which is the point read. In the point read, what you are actually doing here is you are passing the partition key and you are passing the ID of the JSON. So you are really saying, this is exactly where my data is. And Cosmos DB doesn't need to really run a query optimizer or anything like that because you are giving uh, Cosmos DB exactly what it needs. It knows where the data is. That's why it costs uh, you much cheaper. It costs you actually one request unit. Uh, in the query, whenever you actually send a query, well, it needs to run a query optimizer, so it takes much longer, and it costs you at least 2.3 or higher, depending how complex your query is. So whenever you are actually designing your application, and if you always have your ID, and if you always have the partition key, you can really create a really affordable uh, database solution by using Cosmos DB if you actually uh, can use the read rather than query. And it's only from the SDK and the query can be SDK for anywhere else. All right, the next one is index and metrics, which actually just introduced uh, this year. And this one is almost, if you compare it to SQL Server, that's the index suggestion, right? And it kind of tells, so it suggests that if you have this index, the SQL Server might use this. So same with the Cosmos DB. Uh, it is available only in .NET, Java, and REST API. And it, whenever actually you turn this on, it gives you four uh, results. The first one is the utilized single index, which actually tells you, if you are using any indexes, it kind of tells you. Uh, and the potential single indexes is just suggestion from Cosmos TV. It just tells, tells you that, you know what, if you have this index, I might use it. So you want to actually test that just like in a SQL Server, you don't want to create every suggestion indexes. That applies to Cosmos TV, just try them first and, you know, be sure that actually, it's, I guess, makes things better because at the end, composite index, you know, when you create more indexes, it's going to take more storage. So, and... Uh, yeah, so how are you gonna do that? You don't wanna kinda turn this on in production because, well, every time you run the query, it's gonna return the same exact indexing metrics. And if you are kinda saving this in somewhere, you don't wanna do this for every query when you run. So first you need to find an expensive query and you can actually go back to Azure portal and look at the logs out there and try to figure out uh, which uh, query is actually costing you money. Also, you might be actually maybe saving this data and logging in your end. If you have the database audit or anything like that, you might find it from there. Then just take the same query and add this uh, header, HTTP header or an SDK, that's a request option. You can make it true. And when you run it, you can, in the results, you will actually see all the potential indexes coming up in the SDK. So as I said before, those are suggestions. Just recreate them in like a test environment or something and be sure that they are actually uh, helping you. And, main, and also if 
you know, this might actually find you many indexes and you might need to actually create them. As I say before, try to uh, create them same time in the indexing policy. So don't try to uh, do them separately. So I was looking at that and I said that, okay, you know, how I can actually get this by the REST API. So this, what you see here is not really documented. I found it myself. So I just used the Postman for the REST API. And if you actually attach this header to the request, uh, in the response, you will actually get all the indexing matrix, matrices. And it actually comes up in the base 64 format, so it really does gonna make any sense when you look at it. So you just need to kind of uh, convert it back to string here. And as you can see, when I convert it, you can actually see uh, in REST API, this actually works too. Next one I'm gonna speak about uh, is caching. So caching is pretty new, it's in public preview right now. So what actually Cosmos DB did is, you know, they tried to add the caching, but they kinda, I guess, did this in a uh, different way. Rather than actually adding this caching to the database engine itself, they actually added to a different server. By doing that, they did not play with the database engine's code, so they did not, you know, whenever you change the code, potentially you are actually adding bugs, right? So in this case, they actually say that if you buy a new server, which is a dedicated gateway server, uh, they actually add the caching on that server. So in here, if you are reading the same data again and again, and if you have many maybe lookup tables or anything like that, you can actually buy your gateway server, and your gateway server is gonna be just yours because uh, Cosmos DB has a gateway server regularly, but you don't pay for it and it's free, but in the meantime, you are actually sharing that with other Cosmos DB customers. In this case, you are buying your own server, and it's gonna be 100% yours, so it's, gonna be, it's not gonna be free. As you can see right now, that's the prices of them. Depending what you need, you might need to pay that uh, per month, but it might be worth it, because if you are gonna actually get the same data again and again, uh, each time you try to get the data, that's gonna actually cost you zero request units because, well, server is not gonna go to database engine to get the data anymore because you are actually caching it in the dedicated gateway server here. So potentially, that can save you actually a lot of money. And if uh, you have a case like that, I will suggest to kind of test this. Right now it's in public preview, and I'm sure the Cosmos DB team will be, you know, appreciate your uh, feedback with that too. The only, I guess, the, let me cover that too, the only th tricky thing is your request has to be in eventual consistency. So if as a lookup uh, search, for example, you need to be sure that that request that you are making to Cosmos TV is in eventual consistency. If you use something else, caching will not work. All right, now I think I am ready to kind of show you some demo here. So I am excited about this because, let me see, well, that's gonna be tricky. This application you see here is actually, I wrote it, it's a VS Code extension, and the, my problem, like in a, you know, event like that, usually I speak about this stuff, but I don't wanna go to Azure portal to kinda show you stuff because it's not like an SSMS, right? So I try to create my own SSMS here, so whenever I try to talk about the things, I can show you how the things are working in the back end. So uh, let's actually go here. So I have a database here, Stack Overflow database, and my container is posts. So first, I'm gonna actually change this database and go here, because the, the difference between two databases, one of them has one physical partition, other one has more. So we wanna kinda see how this thing works. So let's go back here and pick the posts. So, before I run it, let's actually look at the physical partitions. When you click here, it's gonna tell you you have one physical partition, and the information out there, because there's nothing here, because there's only one physical partition, that actually gives you the hash value. So whenever you are creating the partition key, that partition key has a hash, and depending on that hash, it kind of puts in one physical partition. In here, I don't need to worry about it because I have one. So, if I try to run, Let's see, the first one, for example, select top 11 and try to run it. Uh, 
So that is gonna actually cost me, looks like three or 2.45. So in the right side, you actually see the execution metrics. And in here, it really doesn't change that much. The main reason for that is we are still dealing with the one physical partition. So actually, if I go back and change my uh, database to the one with the multiple physical partitions and try to run the exactly the same thing here, then you're gonna actually see the difference. Let's look at our physical partition. I have five of them. As you can see, there is the hash value, and depending what partition key is, it's gonna go in that database engine. Now, let's try to run the same thing and go from there. So if I go and execute this one, my current one is 2.35, I think. If I run this one, same query with different physical partition because I don't have the physical partition in my where clause. Now we are talking about 13. This is gonna get worse. If you have 10 physical partition, the request unit is gonna get higher and higher because I'm not defining my partition key here. If I go actually look at here, what's really happening here is you can click on this link here. As you can see, this request went to all of my physical partitions and each of them actually cost me uh, request units. And uh, what I'm paying is the total of these numbers. And the only way to fix this problem, I have to actually put a where clause here. So, and another thing to look at, I'm getting top 11, but really I am getting more than 11 results here because I'm getting 11 from each physical partition. So that kind of tells you another thing because, well then who's actually picking the select top 10? It's not the database engine. Database engine gives you the 11, but SDK is the one which is actually filtering that and gives you the 11 because SDK actually get uh, much more than 11. So there's like aggregation and order by SDK actually do a lot of work here in the back end. All right, so next I wanna kind of demo that one more thing here. Let's see if I actually go here and look at the, in the options here, you can actually see I have the max item count here, which is 100 right now. Actually, no, 200 right now. So that means that for each, every 200, I'm gonna go to Cosmos DB once. So let's actually change this. By default, this is 100. Let's go here. So what I'm gonna do here is, rather than 10, well, let's go 90. Let's see what I'm gonna get. Actually, let me change this to one physical partition because that's gonna be much easier to see. So I'm hitting the one physical partition and I am gonna get select up, select up 90. All right. Let's try that. Now, I get 90, my request unit is five something. I cannot see from here, but 561. So, for whatever reason, if I am actually go and run, let's say, first go with 100 and execute it. So that's gonna add a little bit more. So it's like five something right now. It's gonna go probably still 590 something I'm getting, that's all I can see from here. But for whatever reason, if I'm gonna make this 101 and try to run that, we are gonna actually see a big jump here because our max item count is 100. And right now, what are we seeing is 598. Let me try. Yeah, one minute, I see, 101. So I need to, right now it's 101, so if I actually, we will see that jump if I go 102, I guess. So in that case, I'm gonna pass that limit of max item count, 
and then what's really going to happen here is I am going to visit Cosmos DB twice rather than once. So then I should see a big jump here, 8.26. Just one record actually made that big jump. So if you have a grid, for example, and it's always showing the select, I don't know, top 100 or 150, you want to be sure that you, know, you can actually optimize this by the max item count. So that will actually help you with the request units. And the other thing you can do here is I can actually show you the indexing metric system. So in here, for example, we have this complex query. Uh, so we are looking by score, we are looking for owner user ID and ordering by view count. So if you actually look at our current indexing policy for this uh, container, you will see that score is not indexed. And that's gonna actually cost you a lot of requests. So let's actually try to see how this indexing metrics is gonna work for that. Uh, so if I go here, and try to run this. So now if I go actually indexing matrices, you will see that Cosmos DB is actually using owner user ID because, well, that's uh, in our uh, policy. View count is in policy, but it's kind of tells you that if you create this composite indexes, it can actually help you with this request. So in this case, all you can do is try to create them in the test environment and be sure that, you know, whatever right now is 365, but if you have like, you know, many physical partitions, that's gonna be much higher. That's gonna actually help you uh, and test that and try to make all those changes in the same time in your policy index. And that's a VS Code extension you can just download from VS Code directly, it's free, and I hope uh, you will use it and like it. All right, uh, well, that's actually all I have for you today. I hope everybody learned something new today. And please, uh, you can uh, give me some uh, feedback. I will be more than happy, good or bad. I will be happy to kind of improve this. So thank you for coming to my session. Again, uh, if I cannot answer your question today, please follow me from the Twitter or LinkedIn. I'll be more than happy to help you. Thank you. <laughs>